So this video lesson is all about prime and composite numbers. And to talk about that, I want to consider a grove of trees. Now suppose that you had these 12 maple trees and you wanted to plant them uh, in your yard or on your property somewhere in a grove, but you wanted them to be nice and orderly, so you wanted to put them in rows. And you wanted each row to have an equal number of trees, so it had a nice grid-like pattern. Go ahead and pause the video and see how many different ways you can come up with to order 12 trees in equal rows and columns. Now the rows and columns don't have to be equal to each other, um, but each row must have the same number of trees and there cannot be any trees left over. Um, so pause the video, see what you can do with that, and come back when you're ready. Well there are two obvious ways that you can make an equal number of rows and columns with 12 trees. The first is just to have one row that has 12 trees in it, or 12 rows that each have one tree. And while these are completely correct ways and uh, certainly satisfy the equal number of rows, they're sort of boring examples because we don't have multiple rows or we don't have multiple trees in each row. We can also split these trees, and I'll move these trees here as an example, we can also split these trees into two rows. If we split the trees into two rows, then each row is going to have six trees. And similarly, we can see if we just flip the orientation here, if we have six rows, then we are going to have two trees in each row. Finally, there's, a, there's uh, one more set of ways that we can split the trees, and that is if we try to make three rows. If we try to make three rows, each tree is going to have or three rows of four trees each, or four rows of three trees each. So in any of these cases, these are the ways that we can split 12 trees into an equal number of rows. Now if you've noticed, each of these sets here, 2 and 6, 6 and 2, they multiply together to add up to 12, because 2 times 6 is equal to 12, and that's true, and that should be uh, fairly obvious to you why it's true. It's because if you split 12 into two rows, equal sets of 2, then you have 6 trees in each row. So each of these numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12, divide evenly into 12, and that is without a remainder, because we can split them into that number of rows with, a, with an equal and whole number of trees in them. And we call those, we've, before we called them divisors when we were talking about divisibility, now we're going to call them by the alternative name that we talked about, which is factors. And so a number that divides evenly, and that means without a remainder, into another number is called its factor. So for example, 6 is a factor of 12 because 6 divides evenly into 12. And it's important that you have the direction of that, right? 6 is a factor of 12. Uh, so go ahead, pause the video, write down what you see in the yellow box. I uh, don't have to write down the stars, obviously, they're just to draw your attention to there, and then unpause the video when you're ready. So now I'm going to ask, uh, ask you to think about factors a little bit using these three numbers, 35, 24, and 23. So here, I want you to see how many different factors you can name for 35, how many factors you can name for 24, and how many factors you can name for 23. Go ahead, pause the video, and come back when you are done with that. Well, for 35, we can, 1 is a factor of 35, because 35 times 1 is 35, and so 35 is also a factor. And 5 is a factor because five, 35 divided by 5 is 7, and 35 divided by 7 is 35. It turns out these are the only factors of 35, and if you went through and tried to check any more, you notice that none of the other numbers divide evenly into it. Um, I wrote them as multiplication problems, so we can see that 5 and 7 are both factors at the same time with that multiplication problem. Uh, for 24, there's a whole bunch. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24 all being factors of 24, and those are the only ones. Um, and for 23, the obvious one being 1 times 23 is there, um, but if we went through and tried all the other uh, 21 numbers between 1 and 23, we would find that none of them divide evenly into it. And so that brings up the idea 
of numbers that can't be split into equal rows or columns of anything or don't have any other numbers that divide evenly into them. Let's consider a smaller example of such a number, which is 7. Now suppose we had 7 grapefruit slices. Now you could give one person 7 slices, or you could give 7 people one slice. But if you tried to split it into anything else, two people, well, two people could each get three slices, and there'd be one slice left over, and we don't want to have a slice left over. Three people would each get two slices using the same grid here, but we'd still have one slice left over. Uh, four people, we would have three grapefruits left over. Five people, six people, and finally back to seven where we started. Um, but it's easy to see when using that that 7 can't be split up into any multiplication problem other than 1 times 7. And that is a class of numbers that we call prime numbers. Prime number is one that has exactly two factors, 1 and itself. That is, it's not divisible by any other positive integer. So go ahead, pause the video, write down prime number and its definition, and also try to name a few primes less than 40. Um, and also say how you know that they're prime. So, if we look at the prime numbers less than 40, I'll just give you a complete list here. There are 12 prime numbers that are less than 40. 2, 3, 5, and 7 are all prime. 11, 13. 15 is not prime because it's 3 times 5. 17 and 19. Uh, we also have 23, 29, 31, and 37. Other numbers that you might think are prime but aren't 39 is 3 times 13, 35 is 5 times 7, uh, 25 is 5 times 5, 27 is 3 times 9, etc. Um, if you thought you found a different prime number than the ones that we listed here, go ahead and double check that it has exactly, that it doesn't have more than two factors. Make sure it doesn't split evenly into some other amount. Um, and once you double check that, you will know whether they're prime or not. And so if we go back to the example of the trees, where we had 12 trees, that we could split evenly into a number of different rows. Um, that brings up another example of numbers. And we can easily see just if we split this set of trees into two rows that 12 can, in fact, be split into the multiplication problem 2 times 6. So if it's split into multiplication problem 2 times 6, that means that 2 and 6 are both factors of 12, and therefore it's what we call a composite number. A composite number is just a number that is not prime, has at least one other factor other than one and itself. So go ahead, pause the video, write down composite number, the definition of a composite number, and try to name a few composite numbers less than 40, and also how you know that they're composite. So, if we go back to that list that we said before, which I'll recreate here, of all the prime numbers that are less than 40, then it gives us a really good idea of which numbers are composite, because the numbers are either prime or composite. These were our 12 numbers, and if you find any other number less than 40 that's greater than 2, the smallest composite number here is 4, is the smallest and goes all the way with every number that's not listed, uh, from here up to 40, including 40. And the way that you show that you know the number is composite is just by writing it as a multiplication problem. 4 is 2 times 2. That is one other factor that 4 has. You can use the same factor twice in this. It's just that 4 has to be a multiplication problem that is not 4 times 1. Now, if you've noticed, 1 has not been on either of these two lists, either prime or composite. And we're going to talk about that not in this video lesson, but in class tomorrow when we go over... Uh, prime and composite numbers. But for right now, I want you to go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find out whether these six numbers are prime or composite. If they are composite, say how you know by splitting it into a multiplication problem, um, and then just say if they are prime, pause the video, and come back when you're ready. Well, 95, we can tell that the last number is 5, so it's going to be divisible by 5, and in fact, it's 5 times 19. So 95 is composite. I'll mark it with a C. 27 is 3 times 9, so that means it can be split into a multiplication problem other than 1 times 27, so that is composite. 17, it turns out, is prime, because there are no factors other than 17 and 1. 31 is also prime, 
as there are no factors other than 1 and 31. 81 is 9 times 9, so it's composite. And it might be tempting to say that maybe 9,783 should be prime, because it looks like uh, it may not have any factors, and there could be very, very large factors for it. Uh, but we can't judge a number on its whether it's prime or composite by how big it is because there are very, very large composite numbers and there are very, very large prime numbers. So, um, if we look at uh, 9,783, if we add those digits together, we end up with 27, which means that it is divisible by both 3 and 9. And we could go through and divide through 9,783 um, by 3 and by 9 to get the answers. 9,783 divided by 9 should be 1,800 or 1,087 divided by 3. It is 3,261. Um, but to show that the divisibility rule rule works and shows that it's divisible by 3 or 9 is another way of showing that this number is actually composite and not prime. So as a review, um, a number that divides evenly into another number is called a factor. If a number has no factors other than one in itself, and it has exactly two factors, we call it prime. If it has any more, we call it composite.